Thanks, Patrick. The best part is, um, I think consider him my mentor in a lot of functional programming topics, so um, it's a give and take. Um, but today I'm going to talk about something completely different, uh, creating, uh, creating an augmented reality app um, using React and VR. Um, what's VR? We'll tell you in a second. Uh, it's actually, or it's, yeah. Second, let's do it now. Um, Viewer is a company um, uh, based in Vienna, Austria. That's why I'm also partly excited about it because it's tech from from Austria. Um, as an Austrian, you know, you have to uh, I love this. And uh, um, but this company is doing um, AR applications since eight or nine years for a lot of like um, uh, customers, Lufthansa, um, um, uh, T-Mobile, and whatnot, and uh, but they build a lot of infrastructure, and recently they started out of like uh, realizing actually we have a lot of good infrastructure that we can build into a platform, and this is what they're doing right now. And um, uh, here, disclaimer right away: I, I mean, I'm, I'm helping different companies. I'm, I'm a consultant, but I'm also part of the team there and helping them out. Um, so. This is some of the promotional talk to, to show you the API and platform, but I think it's, it shows really, really cool stuff and um, hopefully can widen our imagination what we can do with AR uh, per se. Okay, so um, let's start with the um, Wikipedia definition. Augmented reality is an interactive yada, yada, yada. Um, let's simplify um, how I see React, uh, how I define for me augmented reality is it's a way to extend the real world with virtual experiences. This is like plain simple. So basically, we have the real world, like this room, and we want to put some virtual experiences in there. Cool. Where do we start? Um, 2017, there was like a big shift in this whole um, ecosystem because Apple announced ARKit. And suddenly, you had a tracker. I mean, there were trackers before that were um, solid, but um, it was built into the um, iPhone, and they started to build hardware that uh, the new iPhones that were like optimized to, to do actually um, tracking of your room or tracking of objects and so on and so forth. And Google followed along um, in 2018 with AR cores. So suddenly, like this was the big shift in this in this industry. Um, as someone who is doing a lot of uh, JavaScript and and now uh, more reason. Um, uh, like Swift was not like I tried this. I built a small iPhone app in the past, but in the end, it's a vastly different ecosystem. Um, uh, I did Java in, in the university. Kotlin looks nicer, but still, it's like basically I would need to learn a new programming language, completely new ecosystem, just to build an AR app. Um, so, what about JavaScript? Um, there are a couple of different players or like uh, libraries and so on and so forth. Um, and you basically can separate them into two parts. There's like the ones that operate on mobile as mobile apps or in mobile apps, and there's like um, a React Native AR kit or React Native AR core. Um, I tried out these projects, really cool. The downside is uh, since 11 and 12 months, no commit at all and no progress. And still not covering, they, they're not covering new features and so on, so it's kind of stale. Um, and then there is Expo, Vira, and VR. Uh, at least these are the ones I know of. So basically, you can use JavaScript to um, uh, leverage uh, underneath uh, ARKit um, and ARCore. Expo only currently supports ARKit. Um, yeah, and then there are differences. Um, some of them have like um, these features, then others have these features. I'm, I'm not going to be the judge of it, but I, I want to show you in the end like. Um, things that you can do with VR because obviously I know them the best. Um, and there's the there's also like it's coming. Um, there's AR.js and Eight Wall. These are like uh, providers or libraries um, uh, to use it right in the browser. The only uh, downside is like right now we don't have ARKit or AR Core exposed, so it's like it's not that good of an experience. I mean, sometimes even with AR kit or AR core, we might see this if, if the demo is not working really well, but uh, it's, it's a little bit wobbly, but like for example, in the browser right now, you cannot get the right dimensions even. It's, it's cool for fun experiences, but if you want to do like, uh, put a, put a, um, a couch with in, the, in real dimensions um, into this corner there, uh, it wouldn't be possible because you don't know the right scale. Uh, cool. 
So we're going to talk about UR a bit, um, because what I want to do is then live coding and actually show you how to build a little um, application. But before I do that, I still have want to do like five more, five maximum ten minutes to give you a little bit of insight about the architecture to give you an understanding um, of the overall picture uh, before we go into it. So first, what we need is a camera. Um, and the camera is basically to, to see the, the, we said like we want to extend the real, real world. And the camera is basically our portal to the real world. Then we want to have a 3D layer because we're going to extend it. I mean, you can um, put sound there and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, typical today for our applications nowadays is, um, is that you, you enhance it with visual um, effects or, or objects. Um, so not, not necessarily 3D, but basically a layer where you, you extend the, um, uh, it with virtual experiences. And then, um, and this specific about viewer, um, I have a lot of about uh, creating UIs. Like when you, when you have applications, AI applications, you still want to interact with it. And we're going to see later some examples. Um, but you, um, you want to, for example, change the material or uh, uh, pick different parts of a couch or um, and lots of different things that you want to do with UI. And this is what where we want to still use React because, or at least in this case, um, you could use whatever, Angular, Ember. Um, it's basically just a, a web view layer. So, and how this works is we basically combine all of them together um, into one application. Um, but how can you control this then? Um, it's basically just JavaScript. Um, so you can control this camera and the, uh, this 3D layer uh, view, uh, via uh, the ViewR API, which is just an NPM package. And under the, under the hood, it simply talks to a C++ core. Um, so if you're on a mobile app, or like if you're on iOS, on Android, or there's even a Windows port, um, um, even for HoloLens, uh, basically talks to an, a core, a C++ core that's provided by viewers. So if you want to deploy your own app, you have to basically deploy the C++ core with it. Um, and um, what's also really cool is because there's mscripten, you can even compile it to, um, to web. Because C++ where mscripten can be compiled to web, so there's even a web version. Um, that said, for the web version, the AR stuff yet doesn't work. Um, we're working on this, uh, or the team is working on this. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, it's going to be until Apple and Google exposing the, the trackers natively through JavaScript, um, it's not going to be the same experience as in a mobile app. Cool. Um, and then the dev experiences, you can use, for example, this web version in the, in the browser, even with a mocked version. So you, you, you have a, um, um, I, I'm simply going to show that. But then you can use it on your phone as well. So there's an SDK app, like, I don't know if some of you know Expo, but basically um, what you can do is you, you um, simply can use a, I can start the server here that exposes my application, and then I can open this application from my mobile app and, and, and watch it. Uh, live. I, I'm going to show you that in a bit. Cool. So let's get started. Um, what do you want to build? Um, this is basically a recording from, from the demo, and we want to build an application uh, where you have this intro screen, and then you scan the, the room, and we want to put a place a chair into the room, and there you can see it's a little bit wobbly in the beginning because it hasn't really stabilized, but then it's getting really better. And then we want to put a zip material selector onto it. Um, so let's do this. Uh, first thing we do, npm install uh, viewer CLI, um, and then we can create a new application. And there we go right into it. Um, I did this, no, let's do this one first. Uh, let's close this one. <coughs> I did this already. Um, just, you know, it takes time and network is not always safe. So, um, um, and then you can basically do select uh, which type of like, uh, base template you want to have. I picked React. It's a plain, simple, um, I will show you in a second, um, plain, simple app that does not much. I give it a name, an app version. I selected which tra trackers I want to support because you can pick AR Kit, AR Core, but there are other trackers um, that have different features and you, you can leverage that. So I think Viewer supports 10 or 12 
um, different trackers, something like that. So and then you, what you get is um, um, like JavaScript projects, like many, many others. Um, it has a bunch of packages already installed. Um, you could you necessarily only need the, the viewer API and the core, and then you could use Angular. In this case, it's, it's <coughs> because it's a React template. Um, we just use React. And then you have, like, it uses um, Webpack, so it comes with a configuration. Um, and then you have the plain Enix HTML file. Um, and then basically a small React application, pod reloading even. And what it does in this case, it renders 20 sheep. Let's try this out. Um, npm run start. Um, so there are two modes. Um, the normal start mode, but this is not going to be AR. This is just like the free day uh, layer rendering because in this application we're not activating the camera. And then it adds um, 20 cute little sheep. They're a little bit sad though. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what I can do now is here. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see if this. That's the thing with you, if you're on somebody else's network, yeah, it works. So here, um, I'm actually, um, this is my phone here, for real. Um, and I can zoom in and, and you can see that suddenly on the phone it loads, um, it loads the same thing. It's the same application uh, in the browser as in the phone. Um, there's also uh, a mocked mode. So we can do mock. And then it will simply, it, it opens the browser for you right away. Um, you can also do this by yourself. It's the same as localhost 8080. Um, the mocked mode is really useful for development if you want to do it quickly. So it doesn't use the 3D engine. It just inserts diffs for, for models that you insert. Um, but you basically get these buttons um, at the bottom and you could simulate um, tracking. Um, and I will show you later why, why this is. Uh, nice, but it, it allows you to iterate quickly on the UI without doing looking actual on your phone and and have a like slow feedback loop. Cool. Um, what's next? Yeah, I, I just explained this. So let's do first thing. Um, we wanna just show the camera and like on this phone. Um, what I'm going to do is I always show these short videos, then we're going to code it, and only at the end I will actually run the application because otherwise I would run out of time. I tried this. It, I'm not fast enough. So um, the first thing we do is we um, kill everything that we don't want to have. Uh, we clean it out. The index HTML is fine. We don't um, need to bother about that one. But the index, uh, index.js, um, we clean it out, and then we have, like, Poly fields we can leave. Um, and then, and now comes the, the tricky part. I have to, you know, I have this little cheat sheet, what, what I can do. Um, perfect. Cool. So this is the. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's why people pay me. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cool. So this is the first thing we what we do, and let me give you explain wh what I just did here. Um, I created snippets, and I can do these snippets now. And um, what we do is we we have a viewer API simply in the package JSON. Um, we can use it, and then um, we do an init call. This has to be done. Um, because you can attach debuggers there and, and useful stuff for, for to debug the C++ core. We don't gonna need this now, and you rarely, re I, I never needed it so far. But yeah, if for the developers it's, it's, it's um, that actually working on the core, it's really useful. And then, simply in the viewer API, you have cameras, and there are different cameras, like a perspective camera or um, um, a VR camera, so there's even a VR support, but we're gonna use the AR camera. And then we activate it, and we're good to go. Um, this is all you need to, um, so if you run this now, um, this will activate the camera. Um, cool. Um, 
Now that we have the camera, uh, let's take it one step further, and we want to add tracking. Um, so basically what I want to do is um, we first define a function that gets an event with event.track. Then we say we simply want to show an alert um, if, uh, um, if the floor has been detected. Um, and what you can do is um, you can use viewer.api tracker. There's also dot trackers if you have multiple. But dot tracker will always use this tracker that is available on this device as a default. Um, so if it's uh, AR core is not available on an iOS device, so it would simply will pick the um, AR kit um, and vice versa. And what we can do is we can basically tell it by one once the tracking status uh, 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 tracking target status changed, we simply call this invoke this function and then please activate my tracker. Um, and the outcome of this is then um, camera tracking. Yes, here. So basically, I can scan the floor, and then I get an alert event. Um, uh, yes, I recognize the floor, and, and you can move on. Cool. Um, next thing we want to do is actually insert the model. So basically, place a chair in, in, into the room. <coughs> um, how we can do this, magic, magic. Um, it has to be in here. Uh, so, oh, actually, no, let's take this function. Uh, so what, what's, what's changing now? Um, this was the function before, the on-tracking change. But now we're going to make it async, because we're going to fetch some things, and, and basically we need a wait for that. Um, so we're going to remove this one. And, but in the end, it's going to stay the same. So first of all, when, when we lost tracking of the floor, we wanna, don't want to do anything. But once we recognize the floor, we want to load. Um, um, let's actually make this more readable here. We, um, we are also offers a model manager. So basically, for an interface, you can upload models, and then you, can, um, you get their IDs, and you can uh, load them directly from the internet. Um, this is really nice, because even if your model is broken, uh, later on, you, you don't have to package it with your application. Um, this you, you can download it afterwards. You can fix it, and uh, new users will get the new model. Um, and yeah, you can simply fetch it then from this repository. Um, but then there comes something uh, tricky. Um, we or like let, let's look here first. We have this scene manager. So we want to put it into the scene that, that we have here. Um, we want to insert the model. We we need the model obviously, but then we need the position. So how do we get the position like in front of us or, or at all? Um, and um, one common thing that um, established over time um, is like a good distance is like usually placing something is a good distance is usually if you hold your phone or your, your tablet is like 1.5 to 2 meters in front of you because this is where you're looking you you expect it um, should uh, turn up on the floor um, and therefore there's a on the on the camera itself um, there's a function exposed by the C++ core um, that uh, says get poser in viewing direction and 1800 means just um, uh, 1.8 meters, and then there's a second parameter which is true or false. Um, to explain that, if you um, set it to false, it's basically, you know, when you look up, it would be 1.8 meters just somewhere in the room up there, and it's kind of useless because you don't want to put the chair somewhere on the, I mean, so maybe if you want to, but um, not for the purpose of this application. What we actually want to have is like we want to normalize it that it's like 1.8 meters. So if I'm standing here and if I'm looking, having my phone like this, I want to have it that it's 1.8 meters um, right at this point in the f on the floor. And so if you set this uh, second parameter to true, it basically calculates all these good stuff for you. Um, sounds easy. Um, we had a bug in it. The math is tricky. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's okay. It's it's just some Pythagoras, uh, and yeah. But it, it's yeah. You you can mess up still. Um, and what you get back is a poser. Um, so it's like 
position, orientation, and scale. Orientation and scale is for this point. Um, it, it's simply gonna be uh, uh, um, this. Uh, like there is no really orientation for this point. But if you have a model, you can change the orientation um, uh, based on these parameters, and you can scale it up or scale it down, and so on and so forth. Um, but basically, we always work with poses. Uh, we, we don't pass positions around if they're not used. We always like poses this one um, structure that we're gonna use. Simply a JavaScript object, and you pass it in. Um, perfect. And let's go back to the code. So, as I already mentioned, we can get uh, use this function get pose and viewing direction. We can get our chair model, and then we simply insert in, uh, it into the scene. And the outcome is that the chair. And this is, I mean. Maybe this is not obvious, but this is like 23 lines of code of JavaScript, and you have a chair in front of you. Uh, it's a finished AR app. It's amazing, um, at least to me. Um, yeah, uh, let's move on. This is obviously um, not all of it, because I told you we're going to use React with it. So let's start with a simple Hello World. This is the goal. We want to simply have um, text there as well. <coughs> How we can do this? Well, it's JavaScript. Um, we can simply, no magic, was it three? Yeah, no, four. Boohoo. <laughs> um, we import React, uh, we import React DOM, and we simply um, uh, make a little hello world and put it into the DOM, and, um, and that's it. Um, and this should work. Um, let's actually give it a try. You know, we started it in mock mode. Perfect. Um, so you see the browser is opening and mock mode, and we can see the hello world there. And this is for the material selector that we're going to build. Um, but what you can see here is also um, that uh, th is like this is really nice to develop the UI, but you don't see because on the web you don't have this camera or AR feature. So you don't see that part at all. Um, and this is still the mock mode, so it's, it's emulated. Um, but basically what we could do is also when I activate the tracking or simulate the tracking, um, the chair will be inserted into as a simple diff, as a placeholder. You, so you, get an, um, you can get a rough understanding of feeling how this um, operates. Um, yeah. Um, next step. I need to look at my cheat sheet. Okay, so now that we know we can, um, like, let me give you, like, repeat on this uh, once more. So basically, we have this index.html file. I mean, this is simply um, viewer itself is basically just a web view, and you can do whatever you want there. Um, in this case, I'm just rendering a super small React application, um, but through this viewer API package, I can control the C++ core. Um, that is available on the phone then. Um, yeah. Uh, let's build more of it. Um, we're going to do, uh, next thing we want to do is we actually want to build a material selector. So now we saw the chair model. So we want to change the chair model to um, change the colors of the fabric. Um, so let's do a material selector. Um, for this, and this was five, or? Yeah. Um, okay, there's a bit more code. Um, let me actually, I'm gonna use install, uh, uh, I'm gonna use style components here. Um, so, uh, no, not the calendar. Um, npm install uh, style components. Well, is it safe? Something cool. Uh, so while this runs, um, I quickly gonna explain what we're doing here. Um, actually, let me show it to you here. Um, so this is what we want to have. We want to have a uh, for each material that exists, we want to have a row of like a, a label and then um, Im um, image buttons that you can click on uh, to change the material. Cool. Um, so this is not 
too complicated, but yeah, it's a little bit of code, so let's walk through it. We have React, it's the material selector file. We have start components, we gonna uh, make an image input. Um, it basically has a border radius, uh, so it becomes a circle. Um, it has a, a different focus state. Um, and then we have a row of these uh, inputs, and then we have the label, which um, in this case is just a paragraph. And then basically this material selector expects um, um, to get a bunch of materials um, and then update function. Um, and obviously I looked first up what the, um, how this all looks like. And uh, actually, l let me show you how this um, works. So um, first of all, like how can you, how does this work? Like when we upload a model, um, to this like model manager and viewer, um, DI could be nicer, but it's it's okay. You can upload a model, and then basically we'll have no material at all. But if you prepare your model in different like clusters of polygons, um, you can basically assign materials to it, um, and then have these materials available in um, in your API as simply it comes back as JSON, and you can um, see like okay for fabric they have different values and you have different keys and then even preview images um, and this is how we can build our our model selector because it this is like the the possible values and this is the currently set value and when we um, there's a function called set property and then we can basically update the value of this fabric and the fabric um, of the chair will change. Um, Cool. So, and this is exactly like the material selector is like completely independent of that. It's just user interface that we want to build. Um, so we have we basically go through these materials, uh, show the info label at the top, and then have this um, input of type image with the image URL and the key um, all set. And on click, we want to update the material, provide the name of the material and the key. But this is completely independent of, of um, how this works. So what we have to do then here. And um, uh, this is, let me check. Yeah, it's six, but what's the outcome? Yeah, okay. So we basically need to import this material selector, but now we're changing our app. So our app before was just a hello world. Um, but now what we want to do is we, um, our app uh, is rendering material selector. And we need, we expect now that the app gets the chair. Um, through props, so we get the properties and then we have update material and this is the function that we pass to this material selector. And this then on this chair that we get, um, we expect the function to be the set property values. This comes from, from the model of, of viewer. Um, and yeah, so we need to get the chair in there. So basically this DOM render can only be there if we have the chair. So what we can do is um, we actually get the chair back here when we insert the, the model. So we can say um, this uh, chair um, should be um, the chair. And um, so what, what's happening if I, if I click on the material selector, um, if I have one of these materials and I click on, on one of them of these uh, images, it basically calls on update material, which we provide here on update material, update material, and then basically calls um, on the chair itself, set this property value based on the key and value and the material changes. Cool. Um, there's one gotcha though, uh, I wanna show you that, is, and look closely if I'm, so now I'm detecting the floor, if I click on it and change it, at the moment the focus um, will not change. You see that the white ring is still on the first um, entry. Um, and this is a problem because we have two different rendering engines now not being synchronized. You know, you have this um, C++ rendering engine that's doing like based on, on, on set property values. It's triggering internally a, a re-render, but the React part at no point we're actually changing any state in the React part and basically uh, React doesn't know that it should re-render and update itself. Um, so how can we fix this? Um, are we at seven? I think so, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, so basically what we can do now is, um, and I'm gonna use hooks now here. Um, let's comment out this part for now. But what we, 
Like we need, we don't need any state for this. I mean, you could store it in React and, and then update uh, viewer, uh, the core based on that. In this case, I decided basically, um, I just want to tell uh, React to re-render. So I built a super small reducer that like, every time you call it, it just in, increases by one and basically then triggers a re-render in React. Um, so how we can use this is, um, if you want to know more about hooks, Kitze will give a talk later on. Um, but um, basically, we, we use force update then, and we're replacing our previous update material function with this force update. So basically, when update material is called, um, we tell the uh, rendering, the 3D rendering engine, hey, update the property, but also make sure that, um, that uh, React re-renders um, its UI once. Um, yeah. And then um, the output of this is um, uh, synchronized UI updates. So here, when you change the, um, when you click on the button, it will actually change the highlight of React as well because it re-renders the, the React part as well as the. Um, so let's do a small um, UX improvement. Right now, the material selector is at the top. If you have your phone in your hands, the top is usually the part that's really hard to reach. So let's simply move it to the bottom. Um, we can use some um, um, style components. Uh, 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 actually, let me um, check. Yeah. So usually, how I would develop your item here is um, no, I need to start it. Um, Git style components install file. Looks like it. Cool. Um, so um, here I'm in this app, and basically once I start tracking, the material selector is coming up. And this is how I actually develop the the um, uh, the UI um, because now this is plain HTML, um, and you can simply. Uh, develop on it, add classes, so we could say that um, uh, this input um, should be uh, 25 pixels, and then you see, okay, it has different shape and form and so on. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. So now we want to move it to the bottom. Uh, let's do that. Uh, let's look up my quick hint. Um, yeah, it should be fine, just here at the top. Um, so in our index.js, we can say is it um, 0, 08. So what we add here is basically just get create global style, and it um, the whole body spans up to to like be over the full uh, screen um, with position fixed and overflow hidden, and and then we can say simply um, the app. Um, should have this disp uh, display flex and um, its column, but put it at the end. Um, this is all we need to do. I mean, I mean, we also need to put in the the global styles there. Um, so we are not only gonna render the material selector, but we're gonna render um, the global styles as well as the material selector. Um, cool. Let me. This works. Um, there's one thing. Um, yeah, so the output of this is that we can, um, that it now, yeah, we can show it here, that it will be at the bottom, and also here, if I re-render and simulate the tracking, you can see it's now at the bottom, and I can do uh, the same thing. The there's one thing that is very uncommon to use in, in, um, in, uh, on the web, and that is like setting, because this spans a whole of, uh, uh, on the whole screen, so like from top left to bottom right, um, there's a diff basically overlaying of the, over the whole thing. Um, we're setting this to pointer events none, because we actually want that the pointer events, the touch events, go through to the uh, underlying diff that is like, or the canvas that is actually, um, um, uh, rendering the the, the C plus with the C plus plus core rendering the the whole uh, 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 3D layer because 
built into um, every model by default is that you can drag it around the floor and turn it. So this is a really cool feature. You don't have to manage this by yourself. Um, you can deactivate it, but by default, and uh, I can show this later, you can basically drag it around. And if you would have a pointer event set to, to this auto mode, it would basically, the diff would block the pointer events, or like the touch events, and it would not go through to the underlying diff. So we set this to none. Um, that's just a little bit with the gotcha that you have to be aware of in this situation, but apart from that, um, it's pretty straightforward and, and um, usual. Um, cool. And our f almost final touch to the application is, it's not really nice um, to start right away in the camera mode. You maybe want to give the, the user a little bit of introduction, what's going on, what's, uh, what's going to happen next, and so on. So basically, you want to add this kind of intro screen. Um, so let's make a, um, a dup dup dup, uh, welcome.js. And then uh, 0 09. Cool. Um, and this is, again, just bunch of styles and like rendering an image. Um, what's nice is that every every model that you upload, you can also upload a preview image. So we taking the same ID as um, here for the for the model that we load um, six five three uh, for free. Um, the same here one, and and we basically leverage this this uh, preview image, and then you have a button click to like close this welcome view. Um, and now we will do something radical um, because right now we like everything is a little bit mixed and matched and, and we, we do the app next to the uh, um, to react uh, like the, the react app next to, to um, the AR, but it would be nicer if we have a different um, if a little bit of, of different setup um, and that is. So I'm completely cleaning out the index file, and I'm, I'm changing the structure. We still have the same things. We have like the global styles, that, that's fine. Um, but now what I want to have is here, uh, the app should basically um, initially show the welcome screen, except when the button with this on close is clicked, then show an AR view. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an AR view where we put all the AR stuff into this AR view. Um, um, and the rest is, yeah, you, we just on init, we, we initialize the, the uh, API and start the React application. So now we need this uh, ar.js uh, file. And here I'm on what? Uh, so, and so basically all the code that we had before that is managing the whole viewer um, API. Um, um, is now encapsulated into one component. This is basically one view where we deal with this. And I mean, in that component, you could render other components. And actually, we do this. With the material selector is part of this component. But basically, we have like one view that is responsible for, now, for now an AR view. And of course, we use hooks so we can have uh, use effect. And um, what will happen is initially, this AR will render. Then um, it will just render a material selector. And once um, the component mounted, it will activate. Um, it's exactly the same code. We, we have, um, we activate the tracking, or we activate the camera, we activate the tracking, and we are um, good to go to um, load the model and insert it. And we, we're actually going to use use state for the model, uh, for the chair, because initially this will be set to null, but once all everything is loaded with the after uh, with use effect and, and the chair, we can take the chair and, and use set chair to actually set the chair. Then chair will not be null anymore. Uh, so sorry, we, we actually, if the chair is not there, we render nothing, just the empty screen. But uh, once the chair is there, we the chair will come up and the material selector. Um, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be necessarily a chair. If there's a couch or a TV and this has materials, this would work out of the box fine because we made it, we coded it in, in this abstract way. Um, uh, so far, so good. Um, then this should work. Uh, let me check, is there anything that I missed? No, we, we only want to do one more thing then. Um, now you 
we need a little bit of leap of faith. Oh, it seems to be fine. So, or not? Yeah. So basically now, instead of seeing the camera view right away, I get, I get this React view, the welcome view. Um, and then I'm like, I could start tracking now, but it will do nothing because it actually, it's, it's, uh, it's not even asking for tracking at the moment, um, which probably this triggers an event, so I shouldn't do this. But um, I can basically then tell it start the AR mode and then only it's going into the AR view. And now I can start tracking and then we see um, this working out fine. Uh, perfect. Um, last but not least, before we, we finish up, um, so this is the, the intro screen then, this looks like this. Um, so it basically loads in the with the intro screen right away and then you, you actually, only when you do an interaction, it goes into this AR view. Um, um, there's one more thing though, um, that, that's really important for user experience. If you go to in, into this camera view, uh, people by default don't know what to do. So what uh, lesson learned from, from history is you basically show a tracking hint. You give them advice to like move the camera because this is really necessary for, for AR kit or AR core to understand like where's the position. Um, and one little hint, when, when for using AR apps, don't do this because the cameras really like, will have trouble to uh, uh, um, figure out what's going on, uh, or the trackers. What's really good is if you actually move it like this, because then it can circle and focus around the point and really uh, understand where, where uh, the positioning better. And what you have seen here is also, um, because we uh, this point the events, oh, no. um, these point the events, like after I select my material, I could uh, touch with the finger and move it around um, because we set point events to none and turn it and, and whatnot. Um, cool. Now comes, um, no, portray, do we, yeah. So that le le I, will, I will quickly show it in terms of, um, uh, so basically, I, yeah, I could copy it. No? Yeah, let's do it. We, we copy this over. So I'm basically getting a, um, this tracking hint. It's just, a, a, um, it's just a, a, a diff and has a background image with this uh, GIF that is moving around. Um, so instead of showing um, uh, uh, just returning null, we can show this tracking hint. Um, I now need to uh, fail to compile. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I need to copy this from another application. Yeah, let's do this. Um, hopefully, it will compile successfully. And now we can do the. Let's actually try in a mock mode because the mock mode is really good for checking if everything works. Um, perfect. Yeah, so that's quite fine. So let's give it a try to. Um, use this on the phone live here, what we just developed. Um, bam, bam, bam. Now we have a little, pray for me. <laughs> um, cool, this is, looks good so far. Cool, the chair is loading, stabilized, and now we can actually select and change the material. Yeah. Nice. So this was this was the part of the live demo. <laughs> cool. And um, before I, I finish up, um, I want to um, show three use cases. So. I mentioned in the beginning that Viewer has, has basically built a lot of AR apps for uh, a lot of different companies as a like, service company and now builds uh, like wants to give it away as a platform. I mean, obviously, they charge for it. There's going to be a freemium model. So basically, if you have like, um, if you use it in a way with a splash screen and you don't make hundred thousands of dollars, then um, you can use it for free. But if you make good money with it, then we expect to... to um, a viewer expects some, some uh, um, uh, license uh, fee, um, but 
one thing that, that sets Viewer apart from uh, a lot of, of, of other current providers that are popping up um, is that they're doing this for a long, long time and they build a lot of use cases. And they build even this, this template system now. So basically, there's a lot of like apps that they build as templates on GitHub, and you can simply take them and use them and modify them by yourself and sell them uh, if you just sell the license fee. Um, and um, but they build a lot of different use cases, and, and I want to just show throw three out of them, uh, three out there. Uh, one is indoor navigation. You can basic basically um, um, you can get this as a template, full full thing that works. You, you just like have you need some kind of marker or GPS position. GPS position is really tricky indoor, um, but if you have like a starting marker, you basically can. You, you know the right position, and then you can guide uh, someone completely through, through, uh, through a shopping center or whatnot. Um, and this is pretty cool because you, you can basically give people a museum guide, something like that. If you, if you know someone who has a museum, like take this application, change the positions, adapt the text, and you, you have a, a museum guide for them. Um, um, uh, something that, that I found like really cool is if you... If you um, you could upload a model. Um, there's like uh, th then you need to have a different tracker. This this vision lab from from Fraunhofer Institute. Um, but you could basically can upload a model, um, and um, then you can based on this model um, show um, detect where the model is, and based on that you can uh, provide instructions. So you can have even on the models animations. So you can say like, hey how to set up your router properly, you have to first put in this cable and then these cables and, and stuff like that. Um, and uh, another case is, and this, is, this was really tricky also, that you could do support um, where you say like a, a mechanic can tell someone, you can, you're synchronizing the screens, uh, so basically transfer the camera image, and then the, the support guy can tell you, like he can tap on the position, um, you should, fix this or you should take out that part and it's a position in the 3D space. It's not like on this camera tab. Um, it's like you can really, uh, and you can, I mean you can read, change the position and all this kind of stuff and, and yeah, I, I mean I'm amazed by what's possible nowadays um, and, and that's pretty cool. And yeah, um, that's it for me. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs>Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is Asian Conf in Dornbirn. Amazing venue. Austria is beautiful. Meeting all of the people in the community and getting to go and hang out and ski.